Welcome to episode 22 of Discovering Nagasaki from Local. My name is Chad and this is where you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. So far only Daniel Hazen and Denise Rollheiser were able to correctly answer both of last week's vlog questions. The first question was, what is the homepage URL listed on our sign at Suzuta Market? The answer is jasper1.com. The second question was, how many carp were in the water at the Koino Mizube Michi Pool that I showed you in Shimabara? The answer is six carp. And now for this week's crash course in kanji root particles. Group I kanji root particles include scholar, luck, earth, red, heap, filial piety, worker, craft, five, line up, Asia, west, cultivate, inferior, blue, duty, king, master, and wo. <clears throat> I will cover group J kanji root particles next week. Anyone who has an interest in Japanese food, fine arts, or martial arts will benefit from a basic knowledge of kanji. In today's vlog, I will show you the harvesting and landscaping that we've done recently on our farm. I will also give you a bicycle tour of several interesting places in Isahaya. Let's get started. Here are some of the vegetables that we have recently harvested. These are the sweet potatoes, togan, winter squash, and pumpkins that we managed to grow this year. Much less than last year, but nothing will go to waste. In these seedling trays, we also have some of our harvested onions, jagaimo, kikuimo, and satuimo. To the left, we have next year's collection of seeds for okra, jute, and hibiscus roselle. Over by the window, you can see a close-up view of the jute and okra seeds and the pods that they came from. Today, I'm going to plow four rows on the left of this bamboo stake. But before I do that, I need to plow between the rows of vegetables in the rest of the garden. Getting rid of the weeds and the furrows will allow these vegetables to grow much faster. Despite the recent frost here, all of the vegetables in this garden are still healthy and thriving. In order to plow in these narrow furrows, I will need to modify my Honda cultivator a little bit, specifically the tines and wheels. As you can see here, I've removed the outside tines from the front rotor and reversed the wheels in the back. Now the cultivator is narrow enough to plow each furrow without touching the vegetables on either side. This machine is already running, so I'll back it up and start plowing down this furrow on the left. Tines are made of hardened steel so they won't get damaged if I knock them around. The ground is hard in the garden so I have to use quite a bit of upward force on the cultivator handle to keep the front tines in the soil. This is what the garden looks like after plowing each furrow four times. It took me two hours to do this but it would have taken me much longer to do it without the cultivator. Now all I have to do is go down each row with a hoe to finish the job. Before I could use the tractor for plowing, I had to prepare some bokashi, as I showed in episode 7, to use as a fertilizer. Then I spread out 10 large bags of dry leaves, all of the vegetable peelings from our compost bins, and all of the bokashi that I had just prepared. This is a view of the bokashi leaves and compost under my tractor blades. This is actually the first time I've used these blades since I installed them three weeks ago. This diesel tractor is already running, but before I can start plowing, I need to pull out the bamboo stake on the right here that I'm using as a marker and the wooden beam supporting the tractor blade cover.
This tractor is rather small by western standards, but it makes short work of plowing and mixing fertilizer into the soil. First I have to lower the cultivator blades. Set the gearing for the engine and the cultivator. Ease back on the cultivator depth and then move ahead slowly in first gear. I'll just plow a short portion of this row and show you what the soil looks like after one pass. That should be enough for now. Here's the view of the area I just plowed. After making two passes with the tractor down this section of the garden, you can see how well mixed the soil is. However, the soil isn't very even, and I need to get rid of these tire tracks. I'll use my Honda cultivator to level the soil off. Of course, I had to reverse the rear wheels and reinstall the outside tines in front first. I only need one pass of this cultivator to get this soil ready for my next step, putting in deep furrows. You can see that I've already made two passes to create these four furrows. It usually takes four passes with my Mitsubishi cultivator to get each furrow straight and deep. This is the really physical part of this process. I really have to push down heavily on the handles of this cultivator to make a deep furrow with the rear plow. The sky bean and onion seedlings that I will eventually plant in these rows will be able to thrive in this soil and survive the snow that will fall here next month. This is a photo of what these four rows look like after the landscaping is finished. A little bit of a challenge, but well worth the effort. I'll start today's cycling tour from Isahaya's Cultural Hall here in Uzumachi. It's about 500 meters from Isahaya train station as the crow flies. This cultural hall is used for live performances, seminars, meetings, and festivals throughout the year. The main hall in this building can seat almost 1,300 people. Yasko and I have attended several food festivals here in the past, and we've sold a lot of bread in this building. This hilltop road leads down towards Isahaya Station. I'll stop for a moment just up ahead to show you the view from this hill. On my right you can see a large baseball field with bleachers. You can see the cultural center above me on the left and a large windmill beside it. This is always my favorite part of any hill, the descent. At the bottom of this hill you can see Isahaya's Commercial High School. I'm now about 150 meters from the entrance to Isaiah Station. On the left you can see a lot of parked bicycles, and on the right is a large white car parkade. There used to be a Seiyu department store just in front of Isahaya Station, but it was torn down a couple of years ago. They ended up replacing it with this beautiful and spacious parking lot. This train station has changed a lot over the past few years. Contractors are slowly getting it ready for the upcoming bullet train line. Up ahead on the left is the east entrance to Sahaya train station. This is a slightly dated photo that shows what Isahaya Station looks like from a little further away. I'm now about 400 meters east of Isahaya Station, cycling on this brick road along the Honmyo River. I'm headed for the next bridge along this river, Shimenbashi. On my right are many small restaurants and karaoke bars, and on my left you can see the large retaining wall on the other side of this river. The water level along this river was well over this retaining wall during the massive 1957 flood here in Isahaya. I'll turn left here to cross this bridge. I just have to avoid getting in the way of this not so friendly bus. Isahaya has a lot more bridges than Amora does and a lot more people as well. Here's the scenic view from the center of Shimen Bridge. I'm now in Nagasaki's General Athletic Park in Isahaya. There's a large old locomotive here on display for public viewing. 
and right beside it is an outdoor children's playground. This park has facilities for gateball, soccer, tennis, baseball, jogging, and even swimming. This general athletic park is a place where many people can gather to cycle, run, walk, exercise, and compete. It is also right beside the home stadium for Nagasaki's J-League soccer team, Viva Ren. This is the stadium that Viva Ren uses for its home games, Nagasaki's Transcosmo Stadium. And this is what the track and soccer pitch look like from a stand seat inside the stadium. This is a large oval synthetic track that is adjacent to Nagasaki's Transcosmo Stadium, which you can see in the distance. I'll show you what it looks like from a bicycle. This stadium was originally open to the public in 1969. It was renovated in 2013 and can seat more than 20,000 people. It's used mainly for soccer and major track and field events. There's a lot of people here today because the Vivarin soccer team is actually playing a home game here tonight. To finish off my cycling tour today, I'll show you how close Nagasaki's athletic park is to the stadium. The field inside this stadium is 105 meters by 68 meters. Transcosmo Stadium is about a 20 minute walk from Isahaya train station. The parking lot next to the stadium isn't very large, so most Vivaran soccer fans walk to and from here to watch the home games. The entrance to this park is just up ahead where this green bicycle is parked. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, what is the five letter word that is directly above the model name on my Honda cultivator? Second, which running animal is pictured in the green statue in front of Transcosmo Stadium? You can find a complete list of the contents of my vlog episodes on the Facebook link listed below. Remember to give this video a thumbs up before you leave today. Today's B-roll involved farming, so in episode 23, my B-roll will involve cooking. See you next week.